Now let's have a look at five publisher tips that you need to know for Kindle publication. Now this is just for Kindle, not for print or for general ebooks, although it doesn't hurt to use the same um, tips on ebooks, but this is doing it in Affinity Publisher and it's specifically really for Kindle. So let's have a look. There are five tips. Set the first line indentations. Set paragraph spacing. That's the space before or after a paragraph. Set leading. That's line spacing. If you're a word, a word, um, a word user, Microsoft Word, and any others, the common word processors. It's not actually line spacing. It's called leading, and there's a reason for that. We'll go into later. Formatting chapter titles and adding page breaks between chapters. Five simple tips. And if you miss any of these, it could ruin your ebook, your Kindle ebook. Most of these options can be set in your master page before you load in your document, but others you will have to highlight your document and add them as you go through editing um, your document. Fairly easy to do. So, first line indent. You set that in the paragraph panel on the right hand side. And you can see the arrow pointing at that. If you highlight over that, um, hover over that, you'll see that it says first line indent. Now set it to 5mm. Publishing for Kindle ebooks or even KDP or print books that matter require consistency of typesetting. So you want this throughout your document. <clears throat> if you highlight the entire document and set that, it will set your entire document. Now the first line indent refers to the first line of every paragraph being indented by a specific amount but not set by pressing the tab key. Don't use the tab key and the enter key to put spacing and gaps in your document. The Kindle uh, creator really hates that and will mess up your document something terrible. So go to the paragraph panel and set first line indent to 5 millimeters. This is step two, or if you like, tip two. Tip two through the tulips. Paragraph spacing. Do not put returns between paragraphs. If you press the enter key, you will end up with ugly breaks in your Kindle book and very poorly formatted text, including missing pages. In fact, if you put four carriage returns after a paragraph, it will actually put a blank page in your Kindle document and you probably don't want that. So go to the paragraph panel again and set space before paragraphs and space after paragraphs to zero millimeters. Because Kindle documents have very little in the way of formatting because the user can format them however they like. So set the before and after spacing of paragraphs to zero. Now three, leading. That is line spacing. Now this is this can be a little tricky until you sort of get your head around it. Different fonts set at the same point size may not appear the same size on the page. So Times New Roman may not appear to be the same size as Arial, even though they both might be 12 points. A side effect is that fonts that run small will need less line spacing and vice versa. It's a very small font generally needs less line spacing. That is, the leading can be slightly less. So go to the paragraph panel and set your leading to 1.2. This will change then to 14.4 point, which is correct for the Palatino 12 point font that I have this document set to. Now this won't be the same for all, but there is a general rule. And I'll show you that in a minute. And that is that leading for a paragraph should be 1.2 to 1.4 times the size of the font. Always in that range. Line spacing affects the length of a document more than point size. If you need to fit a document onto a certain number of pages, try adjusting the line spacing or leading first. Line spacing notes here. 
So line spacing is 120 to 145 percent of the point size. That's 1.2 to 1.45. Line spacing is the vertical distance between lines of text. Now most writers use either double spaced lines or single spaced lines. Nothing in between because those are the options presented by, well, most word processors. The traditional term for line spacing is leading. It rhymes with bedding, so named because traditional print shops put strips of lead between lines of type to increase vertical space. Sometimes you see this term in typesetting software. Now the example on the right, both exactly the same paragraph text. For most text, the optimal line spacing is between 120 and 145 percent of the point size. Most word processors, as well as CSS, that's HTML um, lettering, let you define line spacing as a multiple. Or if you can do the math, multiply your point size by the percentage. The text in this paragraph has line spacing of 135 percent. It looks fine. Now the next paragraph, which is exactly the same text, so I won't read it again, is 170% and it's much too loose. In other words, the gap between the lines of text are far too far apart. Now format chapter titles is item number four. The chapter title in a Kindle ebook does not need any special formatting other than to tell Kindle that it is a chapter heading usually style heading one. It's best not to set this in a master page but simply move through the document and set each heading to style heading one. When Kindle create a format your document it will see these headings and use them for the auto generated table of contents if you select it. If you generate your own table of contents it will look hmm strange and conflict with the Kindle one because Kindle documents don't have page numbers. Remember that. On a Kindle there are no page numbers. So that's chapter title. Now tip number five, add page breaks after chapters. Now between chapters you don't stand there putting in carriage return after carriage return to get your text onto another page. That will really mess Kindle up put in a page break. Because the way Kindle works and the ability for users to change almost everything about the document on a Kindle, you need some separation between chapters. Otherwise you have one huge long text that's very difficult to read. Don't use carriage returns. You should insert page breaks. These will be seen as what they are and there will be separation between the end of one chapter and the start of another. I've added this dotted line and arrow to point out the insertion point. Obviously I'll remove that before I print the document, otherwise you'll have these funny little arrows all through your document. But you go into the text, insert, breaks and page break and that will put your document on a new page. And it'll look just like that. That's how it looks in Publisher. Page break, new chapter on, new page. And that's how it will look in the Kindle. Now, other things of importance. Once you've done that, you can add front matter. Front matter includes title on its own page, page break after it. Dedication on its own page with a page break after it. And copyright page on its own page with a page break after it. With a Kindle book you don't need a table of contents to be put in because you don't have page numbers. You can add back matter, that's everything that comes after your story. Back matter includes about the author. You can tell everybody how famous you are hoping to be. And bibliography, well a list of things in the book. Sometimes referred to as an index. That goes at the back of the book. Now, that's really all there is to it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I always appreciate it and it keeps me going.